So the ATF has now resulted to threatening the entire firearms industry in reaction to them losing multiple case decisions, which halt their new rule on frames and receivers. So let's talk about this. But real quick, I wanna thank one of the sponsors of this channel, which is Blackout Coffee. Blackout Coffee is an amazing company. They support the second amendment. They have dedicated roasts for companies like GOA and FPC, and also they have amazing coffee. So I drink their coffee every single day. They are huge second amendment supporters. And right now, if you go to their website and you order using the code armscholar, you can get 10% off of your order. So go check them out. And thank you again to Blackout Coffee for sponsoring this video. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we will be discussing how the ATF has now resorted to threatening the firearms industry through a public safety advisory. The PSA that they submitted is a direct response to multiple case decisions, which resulted in their new rule on frames and receivers being halted. We have covered a number of these cases and decisions here on the channel. These cases include the Vanderstock case down in Texas, where a federal district court judge, Reed O'Connor, has issued multiple preliminary injunctions in favor of multiple companies. Those companies included Tactical Machining, uh, Defense Distributed, 80% Arms, and then also recently he granted a motion for preliminary injunction in favor of Polymer 80. We've also discussed the Morehouse case, which is a Eighth Circuit case out of North Dakota. In that case, where there was oral arguments that took place last week before a three-judge panel in the Eighth Circuit. We covered that here on the channel. If you want to reference back to that, you can watch that video. But the most recent movement on all this is the win for Polymer 80, where Judge Reed O'Connor, in reviewing that lawsuit by Polymer 80, did in fact grant them a motion for preliminary injunction, which protects that company and its customers from this ATF rule. So the ATF has been suffering major losses just one after another on this issue of their rule, which regulates frames and receivers or unfinished frames and receivers. And in response to all of this in the most recent loss in the Palmer 80 case, the ATF decided to send out a PSA, which amounts to them essentially making vague threats to the entire firearms industry. In the PSA, the ATF states that they will be taking enforcement actions against what they claim are structured firearms transactions and structured firearms businesses. In this letter that the ATF sent out, which is the PSA, the ATF states to assist the firearms industry in complying with the licensing requirements of the GCA, the following examples illustrate activities on which the ATF will prioritize investigative review of such activities and conduct may be indicative of willful GCA violations. So what is the ATF trying to say with this PSA that they sent out? Well, they are claiming that they will in fact investigate and take enforcement actions against companies that are selling parts and unfinished frames and receivers through multiple transactions. The ATF through this PSA is essentially saying they consider those type of transactions to be structured firearms transactions, which is a violation of the GCA. So if a company sells an unfinished frame or receiver in one transaction, and then they sell maybe you the jigs, instructions, or tools in a different, completely different transaction, the ATF is still saying that they consider that a violation of this rule. In the structured business section, the ATF is indicating that if a business creates one company to sell maybe the unfinished frame and receiver, and then they create a different company to sell the jigs, instructions, and tools, the ATF is still going to consider that a violation of this rule and a violation of the GCA. They even go so far as to say that if one company, a completely different company is selling maybe the unfinished frames and receivers, and then they partner maybe with a completely different company to sell you the jigs, instructions, and tools, the ATF still says that they consider them working together to be in cahoots, and that would be a violation of the GCA and this new rule. Keep in mind, all of this is coming out after tactical machining, defense distributed, 80% arms, Polymer 80, and potentially others, maybe I missed here, have been granted preliminary injunctions which protect their customers and their company from the ATF's new rule. In response to this PSA, however, the attorneys for GOA in the Morehouse case, which is Stephen Stambouli, he sent out a letter to the Eighth Circuit 
in the Morehouse case. And he submitted this letter to notify the Eighth Circuit, who just had oral arguments on this very issue, that the ATF is essentially threatening the entire firearms industry based on something that they said during the oral arguments they weren't doing. The letter reads, on March 19th, 2023, the U.S. District Court for the Northern District of Texas issued a preliminary injunction against portions of the final rule. The letter then goes on to state that two days after that injunction, ATF struck back, lashing out at the firearms industry in a so-called public safety advisory. Rather than advising, the PSA makes vague threats in an effort to control lawful activities by intimidation. The PSA claims that some suppliers of partially complete frames or receivers appear to be structuring their transactions or coordinating with other persons to sell items that ATF believes are illegal under the rule. The PSA threatens that ATF will prioritize investigations into such activities and ask the public to report potential unlawful conduct to ATF. The PSA then claims that suppliers of unfinished firearms parts may be engaged in criminal activities if other persons provide information such as internet links that enable ready completion or assembly of the unfinished frame or receiver into functioning firearms. The PSA does not explain how criminal liability could attach based merely on information provided by others, information which an industry member might not even be aware. Now, what does this all amount to? Why is this letter being sent to the Eighth Circuit in the Morehouse case? And what is the ATF doing? Well, to me, the ATF is simply kicking and screaming and throwing a huge fit because they know that they've lost multiple cases and they're likely going to suffer even more cases and more losses in these cases and probably even the pistol brace cases as well. Hopefully this recent response by the ATF being submitted to that court shows the court how the ATF is truly acting in regards to these products. One thing again I want to note is that during the oral arguments before the Eighth Circuit, the court asked the ATF's attorney if this rule here on frames and receivers is regulating various parts and kits and things of that nature. However, in response to that, the ATF's attorney tried to completely dismiss that, tried to make it seem like this new rule really didn't impact parts kits or kits and really wasn't a huge issue. But what this letter shows is that the Eighth Circuit judges should be aware that the ATF is saying one thing in the courtroom, but publicly is saying and doing something completely different. Yes, they are going after these parts kits. They are going after unfinished frames and receivers. They're going after jigs, instructions, toolkits that are sold along with these. And they're going after them even if they're sold during completely different transactions on the same website. Um, if different companies are selling them, if someone is giving instructions online and then the company is selling something. So they are reaching out a ton of different actions through this new rule and they are making this criminal activity. Hopefully this will help get a positive decision out of the Eighth Circuit, hoping for the best, but at least in the Texas district courts, we are getting wins. And right now there are protections for a variety of companies, one of the newest ones being Polymer 80. Now, if anything else develops, of course, I will let you all know. Also, if you like this video and you would like to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. As always, I wanna thank everybody who likes, comments, subscribes, who hits the notification bell, who shares these videos. You guys are directly impacting these videos, impacting this channel and helping me to reach and educate more people than I could ever do on my own. So as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this nation was built by arm scholars and this nation will be maintained by arm scholars.